today I want to talk about how to make a research project more interesting. And so like I'm gonna start with an, the example that I'm working on. The general problem is related to how an octopus catches its food. So it has like a completely soft arm and what it does is just like it throws its arm like it bends it and it throws it at the um, prey and then the suckers catch, a, catch the prey but when it comes back to the mouth it actually makes like a fake joint so a bunch of joints like even though its arm is very soft it actually makes like a fake joints for its motion why would an octopus which has like completely soft arms have the same kind of uh, joints that humans have so that from the point of view of evolution would say maybe there's something about joints that is useful in carrying the food from one point to another like when you're catching the food you know where you're gonna take it you're gonna take it to your mouth and maybe the food also the fish that you caught is resisting and so maybe the having the joints is useful for resisting like the noise or the fluctuations from the fish trying to escape and it's also useful for getting it to your mouth accurately and it's easier to control so this has one way like the reason why you want to understand something like that is maybe you're making a soft robot that's like easy to move in different places and it's more flexible you want to understand how to control that robot so the robot is like only has catching something from one end and it has all these degrees of freedom on its hand because it's completely soft it could move in any way but if it could move in any way then it's like so easy to do it wrong like there's so many degrees of freedom to control and so you need to solve that problem and maybe the octopus solves that problem by making a fake joints and then there's like just few angles that you have to control and to do the entire motion so what is the point here the point that I want to make is like I'm trying to understand this problem why what if the joints are somehow important for control if they emerge by themselves without designing something with bones just out of trying to control it you would get bones but now how would you try to address this problem so the first part is if one thing you can do is like try to model the physics of the hand completely accurately plus like the way you move, you have like electrical signals going from the nervous system and provoking the muscles and causing the motion you can write down a computer program that tries to simulate this process as accurately as you can so you want to keep all the details that you can like the physics of the water like when the hand moves the water around its flow and you need to simulate that you need to simulate the muscles like the nervous system like the electric pulse you need to simulate um, like all the different pieces of the muscle and so this process like if you want to include all these details obviously it becomes hard to solve it just by equations you have to simulate it on a computer and maybe even on a computer you can simulate it perfectly accurately if you're trying to keep track of all the details so but I still want to understand qualitatively what's important about joints so maybe to do that I don't need all of the details I just need to keep I need to find a system a simpler physical system like a toy model maybe I don't even have to make it in three dimensions only in two dimensions and uh, maybe I don't need to worry about the water forces maybe the water forces are not important so I I will start to like consider all the different effects that might be causing this phenomena and look for the simplest thing simplest model toy model that has all these uh, that has the essential features that would also allow me to understand something qualitative about the octopus once you understand it for the toy model then you can uh, go to the actual more accurate system and uh, test your ideas and see if they apply there as well so my point is the way that uh, you make your project interesting you look at like the complex thing that you want to understand like there's something here 
and then there's down here is what you can do like the tools this is where you are this is the thing that you want to do and you like change what you want to do like maybe this you say this is too hard or maybe uh, let's say this is what you want to do this is where you are and then you try something and you move a little but you're still far away from what you want to do because it's too hard and then you say okay I'm gonna instead of this goal simulated perfectly accurately I'm gonna remove some assumptions simplify it and then solve this easier problem and then you try then you move forward a little bit and the point is like you have your goal and where you are and you keep moving both of them are moving until they meet where what you can do is something interesting and matches the goal and then you can basically you have a paper that you can publish or you have a project that you have finished so the point is like the way that you make something interesting like you remove a bunch of assumption you say maybe this is not important the water is not important that's not important maybe this is important and then you try it maybe the system you're left with is too simple it does not contain any of the essential phenomena that you want it to see and so you say okay maybe I'm gonna complicate it a little bit so that one so so there's two things you want to reduce the general ger, generality by removing assumptions to something that you can handle but you want to keep enough so that the phenomena that you see that the phenomena that the toy model has is the same that the system that the toy model is simple but complex enough that you can see the things that you want to see all right so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time